Welcome, everyone, to our Bleacher Report breakdown of the Sweet 16. I'm Andy Katz. Uh, as always, you can follow us also at NCAA.com and March Madness MBB. Um, all right, so we did this a little on Monday, but we're going to take it a little bit further here on Tuesday and go region by region, give you my predictions. Um, look, I didn't have every upset. No one does. There are no perfect brackets. But I actually have three of my original Elite Eight matchups still alive. So this all still could happen. And if you get it toward the end, that's obviously pretty positive here. Although it really doesn't matter. But um, all right, let's go to the East. I will be there on the sideline. Uh, going to practices on Wednesday. Games are Thursday night in Boston. Heading up there shortly. Um, all right, start with the UConn San Diego State matchup. This is a rematch of the national championship game. UConn, I think, may not have more NBA players. I mean, Klingon and Castle definitely are. And I think there could be a spot, obviously, for a shooter like Cam Spencer. And Tristan Newton, I think, will get a look in some form or fashion. So, as I say that out loud, maybe they have as many. Uh, maybe not as many high picks, I should say. Um, because Hawkins obviously went in the first round. Um, we'll see if the other guys uh, outside of Klingon are first round. Well, Castle is going to be lottery for Klingon. And as I'm saying this more, I see that they're basically as good. And talented. Um, so wind that back up. This team's as good, if not better. Uh, they didn't lose eight games in the Big East like they did the last year. They're on a mission to repeat. Um, and look, San Diego State's not as good as they were a year ago. Jane Liddy's back. Lamont Bell Butler's back. They still defend. But they had some issues in the Mountain West Conference, which was obviously very strong. I expect San Diego State's not going to be intimidated. But I don't think they can score with UConn. So I think UConn advances, which is what I predicted. Um, although I had it against Auburn originally. Illinois, Iowa State. We've talked about this. Number one offense, number one defense. What's going to give? I would rather have a number one offense than a number one defense. Iowa State's not going to be able to score as well as Illinois. Terrence Shannon Jr., good two-way two player. I think he's going to be hard to stop as he's in the transition. Um, I think it's going to be a great game, physical game. I like Illinois to win uh, late on Thursday night. So I have a UConn-Illinois Elite Eight matchup. That game is going to be 90 to 84, something like that. It's going to be up and down, tons of points. I still think UConn advances. But I think it'll be a great matchup. Saturday in Boston, electric crowd should be something for sure. So that's what I had in the lead eight. I had UConn, Illinois, and UConn advanced. So my East is still potentially intact. Let's go to the West. Carolina, Alabama. That's what I thought would happen. It has happened. I love the guard. Sears, Davis, big time guards. Um, I think we're going to get a great game in L.A., but Carolina is going to advance. They have the advantage inside. They're going to defend better than Alabama can. Clemson, Arizona. Clemson's a surprise. I thought this would be the Lobos. They did not play well. Clemson gets all the credit. And on this app, we have talked about how good Clemson is this season. I did not have the faith at the end, I'll admit, but I had faith early. I was on Clemson in my top 25 before they were in the AP. So, kudos to Brad Monell. Going against an Arizona team that I think is just loaded right now. They had some dips in the middle of the season. Fine. But I think Arizona wins in L.A. And we get a Carolina-Arizona matchup. Again, one that I thought would happen. I got it predicted here. So, we got Carolina-Arizona. Caleb Love versus R.J. Davis. They were teammates two years ago. Lost the national championship to Kansas. I think Ballo can negate Bay, uh, Baycott. Um, you know, I just overall, it's pretty close in terms of the talent. No question. Harrison Ingram went against Arizona when he was in the Pac-12 when he was at Stanford. I think it's a really good balanced game, without question. Balanced game. But I'm going to stick with my pick, which was Arizona. So I'm going with Arizona. So my 
left side of the bracket is all still alive. I can have all those Elite Eights still going with Arizona versus UConn. Now let's go to the South. Houston taking on Duke. Um, great game for Houston in beating a and Jamal Shedd, you know, and Terrence Shannon, I think, are the two best two-way players. Duke played great in beating James Madison to get by Vermont. Um, I thought this would be Wisconsin. I was completely wrong on the Badgers. But I like Houston here in Dallas. I think defensively they'll be able to lock up the Blue Devils. Bottom part, I did have Marquette there, but I had Kentucky. Kentucky lost to Oakland. NC State, Kevin Keats, and that entire roster gets tons of credit for everything they've done to win five games in five days in the ACC and then take out Kentucky and then in overtime, Oakland. But I think the Cinderella run ends now. And I think Marquette will advance to take on Houston. Shaka Smart and Tyler Kolick get to the Elite Eight. Cam Jones has had a phenomenal tournament so far. And I just, I don't know. This First of all, this would be a great game in Dallas to experience teams, to teams that are well coached, play possession by possession. They defend. Uh, Kelvin Sampson, Shaka Smart doing a great job. And this is the one different I had because I had Houston, Kentucky, and I had Kentucky originally. I'm going Houston, Marquette with Marquette now getting to the Final Four. So two Big East teams in the Final Four. Down below, in the Midwest, we got Purdue Gonzaga. I saw that game in Hawaii. Both teams have gotten better, but Purdue's better than Gonzaga. Graham E.K. and Anton Watson versus Zach Eady and Trey Hoffman, uh, Kaufman-Wren. I think Watson and Kaufman-Wren can negate each other. Ed is better than Ek. I think the difference could be Lance Jones because Braden Smith, Ryan Nemhard, uh, Nolan Hickman, and Fletcher Lawyer. But I don't think they have a matchup for Lance Jones and Cam Heidi's playing great off the bench. Gonzaga does not have a great bench. I like Purdue to advance in Detroit. Creighton against Tennessee. You've got Baylor Shireman, Ryan Kalkbrenner, Trey Alexander. That's their sort of the big three for Creighton. And Dalton Connect is going to dominate offensively for Tennessee. He's a first-team All-American, Player of the Year candidate, Player of the Year finalist. Tennessee's going to defend. I like the Vols beating Creighton, denying Creighton two straight years uh, in the Elite Eight. So, I like Tennessee to advance, and that's what I had. I had Purdue-Tennessee in the Elite Eight Midwest, and I'm going to stick with my pick. Purdue beat Tennessee in Hawaii. They'll beat him again. They don't have a matchup for Zach Eady. So, three of my four Final Four teams still alive, and I'm keeping, I'm staying with them. UConn versus Arizona. I have UConn advancing in Phoenix. Yes, two hours from Tucson. But I still believe the Huskies have the better team, but that, that, that will be a tall task. I mean, obviously, tickets get dispersed still. Marquette Purdue. A game I saw again. This would be so crazy that Purdue would have a chance to go. Um, It would be uh, Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette. Wild. Same three games they had in Hawaii that they would do here to get to uh, the national championship game. And I think Purdue wins. Again, comes down to Zach Eady. He's a consensus national player of the year. He was a problem then. He'll be a problem now. So now we get the matchup that we've all been waiting for. This is the game between the two best teams this season, two most consistent teams. Uh, Neither team, by the way, lost a non-conference game. Think about that. UConn and Purdue both played really good schedules. Neither team lost a non-conference game. Neither team lost at home in their conference, only lost on the road in their conference, the respective conference. Um, And then Purdue obviously lost the neutral site 
in the Big Ten tournament. So I'm talking about true road. And that game was an overtime to Wisconsin. So I'm going to stick with my pick, which is UConn's pressure, I think, in this situation will bother Purdue enough. Klingon will, you know, be right there with Zach Eady. And I like UConn repeating as national champs. First team to do it since Florida in 06, 07. Dan Hurley's got a dynasty that he's building or has built uh, in stores uh, for that would be their sixth national championship. If I got that right. Um, pretty amazing. But if we get UConn Purdue in Phoenix, you know, I think it'd be really good. Okay. Suave saying Zakai Ziegler didn't play in that first game. That'll determine a lot. I agree. Uh, UConn should be favored in every game, and they will be. Coldy Bolte. Okay. Marquette over Purdue. Zach Eady is nothing. You are completely wrong. This is not about the NBA. He dominates everything he does in college basketball. 30 and 21, 25 and, or was it 23 and 14? Come on. Stop. He isn't nothing. He's going to win player of the year two years in a row. You know who else has done that? Uh, Colty Bolte. You know who else has done that? Ralph Sampson. Bill Walton. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Jerry Lucas. And winning it twice. David Thompson. Pete Maravich. Oscar Robertson. I think I said Jerry Lucas. That's the list in men's college basketball who've won it twice, let alone two years in a row. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. So, I mean, stop with that. Um, out of the rest of the teams in the East, which team has the best shot to beat UConn, Illinois or Iowa State? I think it's Illinois because Illinois can score with Utah, UConn. I don't think Iowa State can. Now, whether or not Illinois can defend UConn, that's another question. Brian Vivar, if San Diego State can shoot like they did in the last game, then they got a chance. That's true. It's going to be a total road game for the Aztecs, by the way. I'm here once again. Just want to get a shout-out. L. Jordan 9, there's your shout-out. Uh, if L.A. Cadu keeps shoot, keep shooting consistently, then they'll be insanely tough to stop. That is true. But I still like Arizona and L.A. If P.J. All can stay out of foul trouble they, in that Purdue – Oh, sorry. Uh, they could have a shot at Arizona. Sure, they can, Native Son. I'm not going to dismiss Clemson. They're playing great. Oh, we talked about Zakai Ziegler. Um, T. Suave says, I like Tennessee because uh, of their shooting. They struggle to shoot against Texas. They've struggled at times to score. D. Bishop says, I like Houston in that Houston Marquette matchup. He doesn't trust Shaka. I disagree, D. I do. I got Arizona-Houston with Houston winning it all. But a UConn-Purdue matchup would be unreal. I agree. Arizona-Houston definitely could happen. Uh, Native Sun says ACC gets four teams to the Elite Eight. Um, don't see it. Sorry. Don't see NC State. Carolina, and don't see Clemson. Sorry. Carolina-Duke certainly could. And let me address that other issue, please, if I have your attention. This is getting so tiring, and I'm addressing to the fans, to the administrators, to the coaches, to members of the media who are following this path. The success of certain teams in a conference does not equate to a great conference. Let's stop with the nonsense. The Big East has three teams that are in the tournament. All three are deserving. All three got high seeds. All three advanced, as they should. UConn. Marquette, and Creighton. Their success has nothing to do with St. John's and Providence. Seton Hall should have been in. I had them in. So they're, they should be in. Their success has nothing to do. Did you forget DePaul and Georgetown were epically, epically bad? Those were wins for everybody? Judge those teams individually, not as a conference. It's unbalanced scheduling. The success of these teams has nothing to do with it. In the ACC, okay? Carolina, Duke, Clemson, 
We're the most consistent teams in the ACC this season. All deserving. All in. NC State only got in because they won the ACC tournament. Great. Oh, by the way, they didn't have to play Kentucky. They played Oakland. In overtime, win. Great. You play who's in front of you. But NC State's success has nothing to do with Wake Forest or Pitt. And are we forgetting about Virginia? They were in embarrassingly bad in the first four. Okay? Purdue and Illinois in the Big Ten are in the Sweet 16. That has nothing to do with Minnesota, Iowa, who didn't deserve to get in, Ohio State. Nothing. At all. The Mount West had six bids. Yes, they got one team in the Sweet 16. And you know what? Look at the seeds of the Mountain West. New Mexico, 11, out. Utah State won its first game in an 8-9 game, lost to the 1, out. Boise State, a 10-10, even, out. Colorado State won its first game and then lost to the 7, Texas. So, out. Nevada was the 10, losing to the 7, Dayton, out. So, San Diego State was the only team that has advanced relative to their seed. The other five lost when they went up against a higher-seeded team or an equal one. So, put that in perspective. It does not equate to the strength. I mean, they earn their bids. You want to argue whatever. The A-10. Duquesne, okay? Duquesne wins the A-10 tournament. Pulls off the upset over BYU. Loses to Illinois. Does that have anything to do with St. Bonaventure? George Mason? No. Zero. So, I understand. ACC Commissioner, all these different people are all squawking about their League teams. We should have got more. We should have got more. I mean, I'm against going to 72. If you do, fine, whatever. But it has nothing to do with the success of your teams in the tournament. Zero. You can die on that hill all you want. But the argument is completely without factual basis. Each team is judged independently. And the success of the NCAA tournament has nothing to do with the strength of the league. Zero. It has everything to do with the strength of that individual team and who that team plays. Period. That's my soapbox for now. I agree with you, Native Son. I thought Seton Hall should have been in over Virginia. Polish Hammer agrees with me. My point. Blade says Arizona has the tools to beat UConn. Sure. Um, Final four, which will be the closest games in the matchups that I predicted. Uh, UConn, Arizona. Do I agree that Arizona is the easiest path? I mean, I guess, but beating Carolina is not going to be easy, let alone Clemson. So they're all hard right now. They're all good. All right. I'm off my soapbox. Um, I'm off to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight in Boston at TD Garden. Check me out on TBS on Thursday night. Unbelievable crew. Kevin Harlan, Stan Van Gundy, Dan Bonner, uh, our producer Ken Mack, Mike Arnold, director. We are got a great, great crew. Um, check us out. TBS, Thursday. Don't know the network Saturday yet. Uh, and uh, keep it right here. Coverage on Bleach Report. NCAA.com, March Madness, MBB. Follow me at the Andy Katz on X, formerly Twitter, or on Instagram at the Real Andy Katz. Thanks for watching, everyone, everyone, and enjoy the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight.